Hi everyone, I'm Ben. Welcome back to my channel and to a rather last minute decided upon vlog because it is a lovely, bright and sunny, well actually not yet sunny, but due to be very sunny later, day in May and I'm in for a potentially very bookish day. So there are a few things going on that I thought you might be interested to come along for the ride for. The first is that there is a Bristol Indie Bookshop crawl going on today and that involves 10 bookshops across the city that are all teaming up to do a bit of an event. I'm not sure if there's much going on at each of the shops, but they do have a flyer, which I'll show you in a sec, and they are doing 10% off books throughout uh, the time that the bookshop crawl is running. So I might pick up a few books. I've got a couple that I've got my eye on, but I'm open to being swayed by what the what the booksellers are really interested in. Then there is the Bath Festival going on, and Bath is very luckily just a short train ride away. So it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to get over there, which is really nice. It's a beautiful city, and they've got a festival on uh, over a couple of weeks where they've got a lot of book-related events. Um, Mr. B's Emporium is a bookshop over in Bath, and they're running a bunch of stuff. And they have an event this evening about the Jalak Prize, which I think has a former winner and a current nominee um, in conversation about the prize and why it's important. Sounds really interesting. I will need to see how I feel a bit later on, I think, because because if it gets really sunny, I might be disinclined to go and sit in a dark room and listen to conversations about books. I might just want to sit in the garden and read some more Demon Copperhead. So we will see about that. And then this evening is Eurovision, which is being hosted in Liverpool this year. So I'm going to watch some of that on TV. I am Team Sweden this year because Laureen is an icon. But the UK has a really juicy place in the running order. So who knows, big things could happen. But before we set off, let me tell you a little bit more about the Indie Bookshop Crawl. This is the flyer they've been giving out. And you can see there are 10 bookshops participating. And there's a little bit of detail about them here. So my typical haunts are the Arnolfini Bookshop, uh, which is a museum that's got a really good bookshop in the front of it. Uh, Bookhouse. Stanford's and Storysmith, which is probably my my local. But I haven't been really to any of the others. I've popped into Heron once. Um, Dreadnought Books probably isn't for me. Um, it's one of those counterculture bookshops rather than the sort of stuff that I would typically read. But I'm really interested to go to Max Minerva's. It's a bit of an institution and it's one that's probably the most far away from where I am. Uh, so I've just never made it out there. And there's a couple that, to be honest, I haven't really heard of that I'd be really interested in paying a visit. And what they do have is this really jazzy map uh, that someone's hand drawn of where all the bookshops are and a, and a route uh, to go between all of them. There are not directions, but I guess timings and distances between each bookshop. And I have added all of these times up because I'm gonna walk and it's four and a half hours. So I don't think I'm going to make it around the entire route, but I might head off and try and visit some of the bookshops that I haven't been to before. But those are annoyingly the furthest away and with the most distance between them. All the stuff around here does look really close together, but this is actually a big old hill. So it's not maybe as close as it might seem. But yeah, what a lovely little flyer to hand out. And luckily, if you take this with you, you get 10% off any book purchases from all of these participating shops. I am just packing my bag to set off. Obviously, Demon Copperhead is coming with me in case I make a little pit stop for a coffee or for lunch and I can read a couple of chapters. Before I head off, I think I am going to make a quick coffee because I'm going to need that energy boost for all that walking. And because this vlog needs content, <laughs> you can watch me make it. Right, I have got my coffee and I'm gonna get my shoes on, get out the door, get on this bookshop crawl. So let's go.
Hey, um, I've just been to Gloucester Road Books and now walk into Max Minerva's. But the sun has come out, it is gloriously shining. I've had to derobe slightly. I'm getting a little bit sweaty, but um, yeah, four shops down. Fifth is up next. Not sure how close to the 10 I'm gonna get. Uh, I might just squeeze in a few more after this. Right, I'm just taking a short pause on my way to my final bookshop, which I think is the eighth one I will have been to today. I'm heading to Storysmith. I didn't think I'd be able to fit this one in, but it turns out I'm not going to Bath in the end, which I will explain a bit later in my wrap up when I go through the books that I've bought. So yeah, let's head to the final bookshop and oh my God, I'm so sweaty, it's disgusting. Okay, it's a day later because I lost track of time lounging in the garden and before I knew it Eurovision was starting and I just did not get any time to film uh, anything about the books that I bought yesterday. Very pleased in Eurovision for Sweden to come out on top. I nearly had a heart attack when they were announcing the results because I thought Finland were going to cha-cha-cha their way into the lead. Luckily, Lorene came out on top, very happy for her. The less said about the UK's placement, the better. Yesterday, overall, was really fun, and I managed to get around to seven of the bookshops. Not eight, as I said in a previous clip, but it is way more than I expected, and I bought four books from four of the bookshops. But before I go into those, two things I want to talk about quickly. First is why I ended up not going over to Bath for the evening. I was heading over there for an event about the Jalak Prize, which is a prize that recognises and celebrates British resident authors of colour. The event was going to be a conversation between Guy Gunaratne, who won the Jalak Prize a few years back for his novel In Our Mad and Furious City, Ayanna Lloyd Bamwo, who's currently shortlisted for her novel When We Were Birds, and then a former judge, Sarah Shafi. They were going to be chatting about the prize, its importance, and it sounded really interesting, but sadly, there was a train strike in the UK that I completely forgot about, and although some trains were running, it meant the final train home was one hour after the event was due to start, which didn't seem doable so I ended up just staying at home. I wasn't too sad as I am in favour of train workers getting the pay and working conditions they deserve but it was just a little bit disappointing. I did try on my last stop at Storysmith to get a copy of Guy Gunaratne's um, In Our Mad and Furious City but Storysmith didn't have it and apparently it wasn't even available to order from their supplier. I wonder if because Gunaratne's got a new novel out I think 
this month called Mr. Mr. Maybe they're reissuing it in the new design. Oh well, I will keep a lookout for it. The next thing is really exciting. Well, it is for me anyway. If you watched my February wrap up, you'll have seen I was raving about a book called Riambo by Priya Hine, which is set in Mauritius. And I was very pleased to see it pride of place in the first bookshop I went to yesterday. I think I got a clip of that in the good bookshop. Well, I was shocked that the publisher Indigo Press had seen the review and they left a comment on the video, which got me really excited. But then I found out that Priya Hine had seen it too and she had put it on her Instagram story and I was like blown away. She was really pleased with it and we had a little chat on Instagram, um, which was so lovely. I had never in a million years when I started this silly little channel expected an author to see and be happy with a review I did. So it is so cool and I am so happy that she's happy. Um, it's all just really great. Anyway, Indigo Press got in touch and asked if they could send me another book that they're releasing later this year. And I was delighted to say yes, because I've never been sent a book for free before, except when Amazon have done a delivery mix up. So when I got home yesterday, I saw that this had been delivered, which is my first ever advanced readers copy. And I am buzzing about it. And I thought I could open it on camera and uh, tell you a little bit about the book that's inside. Let's have a look what's in here then. Ooh, okay, so we've got Between Dog and Wolf by Christina Gorcheva Newbury. And I believe this has been published already in the US under the title, The Orchard. Oh, there's a card in here that says, Hi Ben, we hope you love this novel as much as you loved Reamble. Enjoy your first ARC. Oh, that's so kind. Um, little flyer about the book and the author. Uh, so it's coming out on the 19th of October. Uh, so this says the hour between dog and wolf is twilight when it's hard to distinguish between known and unknown right and wrong when one state has ended but another has not quite begun. Uh, so this is set in 1980s Russia with Soviet policies, cruel but familiar, giving way to untested concepts. Yeah, so it seems like this is about the dying days of the Soviet Union and how it transitioned into modern Russia. I mean, it's giving Russian vibes told through the lens of these four main characters who are teenagers at the start of the book. Really interested to give this one a read. I hadn't actually heard of it before the publisher got in touch, but it does sound right up my street. I did actually read a little preview on the Amazon US website before I said yes, because I, f I would have felt bad, I think, if I read the first page and I just hated it. So it's promising. I'm going to give it a read. I'm excited to get to it. And when I do, I will tell you what I think. Okay, on to the books from yesterday. The first one I got was from the very first bookshop I went to, which was The Good Bookshop at 264. It was a lovely little shop that sold more than just books. And I had a really nice chat with the lady working there about the bookshop crew and about books in general. And it set my day off to the perfect start. So thank you, Good Bookshop. That was really great. This was the smallest shop by far in terms of size, but also selection. When I walked in, I was a little bit worried because there weren't actually that many books around. Um, and I think like Heron Bookshop may be a little bit smaller, but that is floor to ceiling books. The Good Bookshop just had a very small curated selection organized into these different um, categories, not genre categories, but things like underrepresented voices and so on. And it was so great possibly the best selection I saw all day. I think I could have bought two, three, who knows, 10 books from there right away. But the one I settled for when I decided to control myself was Tiamo by Hannah Osterbeck. This is one that I've mentioned in a previous video. It was one that I thought about for my international booker predictions. And I compared this one with the body Kintsugi and wasn't sure that both of those would make it. In actual fact, neither of them made it. But they've got similar themes. They're both about dealing with cancer and death and grief before death happens. This is translated from Norwegian by Martin Aitken. I believe it's about a woman dealing with the coming death of her husband from a terminal illness and it's written in the second person it's addressed to him and narrates what he goes through and 
it just sounds really heartbreaking. It's got some lovely quotes about it on the back from reviews that it's about grieving and waiting. It's timeless and universal. Ostovic has written perhaps her finest novel about her life's greatest loss. So I wonder maybe this is autofiction as well. I don't actually know the background, but it sounds beautiful. It sounds very sad. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading it. And it's a very short novel, so I can probably squeeze it in between some chunksters at some point this year. After the good bookshop, I went to the small city bookshop, which despite its name was a lot bigger, but I was excited to see them prominently displaying the Women's Prize long list. I haven't seen enough celebration of the Women's Prize long list. I expected like a more of a song and dance in Waterstones, I think, but they also in the small city bookshop had a copy of the sleeping car porter which i was super excited about because i don't think it's actually out in the uk yet although i did decide in the end not to get it and my next purchase was not until the next shop i visited which was gloucester road books this was by far the busiest of the shops i went to and it was quite a small shop so i did have to loiter for ages to get some footage without lots of people in it i feel awkward about taking footage of other people. The shop um, has a really nice old library vibe, lots of dark wood, moody lighting, and a pretty good selection. In particular, they had a really nice indie press selection. In the end though, I went for Transcendent Kingdom by Yard Jassy. I have not read any Yard Jassy, um, but I know people absolutely rave about her work. This is her second novel. I do have her first one on Kindle, which I need to read at some point as well. But this is a really beautiful cover. And this is about a woman. She lives in the US, but her family is from Ghana. And I think her family is affected by the opioid crisis. And so she turns to science and tries to channel her grief and anger into understanding addiction and then her mother comes to visit and it becomes this intergenerational story of I guess hardship and trauma that goes back generations. Yeah another one obviously that I'm looking forward to otherwise I wouldn't have bought it but yeah it sounds really great and it's had brilliant reviews so excited for it. Then I walked over to Max Minerva's which is a bit of a Bristol institution and I was excited to go but really interestingly the vibe could not have been more different from Gloucester Road books it's big and airy and bright it's got lots of space and very strangely no one was there like you would never have guessed that there was an event going on but they had a nice selection and in particular some great tempting hardbacks they had a signed copy of Clytemnestra which I know a few people in comments recently have been saying is a great book that I should read uh, but I did resist and it also had this ludicrously beautiful sprayed edge copy of Sparrow by James Hines which has just come out uh, it's got like almost a mosaic sprayed onto the edges of the book I am really not that huge a fan of sprayed edges but this was top draw unfortunately i forgot to get any footage of it but i'm sure they posted about it on instagram so maybe i will pop a picture of it here and you can see the beauty they too though had a great indie press selection and from there i nabbed Penenka by Ronan Hessian. This is a book I've heard really good things about. I know Jack Edwards has really championed it and it was one of his favorite books in the last few years. I think a Penenka is a football term about a type of penalty where you kick it down the middle instead of to the side because the goalkeeper tends to commit and jump one way or the other. But this has a fairly vague blurb. Penenka spent 25 years living with the disastrous mistakes of his past and he's now 50 and he is rebuilding an improvised family life with his estranged daughter and her seven-year-old son. Okay, so another intergenerational story going on here. Oh, and he meets a woman. Okay, so this seems to be about not letting past problems define you and making the most of the family and the people around you um, to enjoy yourself whatever age you are. I imagine this could be a it's never too late kind of novel. I wonder if there is going to be some football in here because of the title but we'll see. I am also going to Ireland in a couple of weeks and I was looking to take some Irish fiction with me to read so I was going to take Claire Keegan's Foster but this could well come with me too. After Max Minerva's I got the bus into town and went to Stanford's which is historically known as a map shop 
and I'd like a travel bookshop, which I guess Daunt Books is as well. But their fiction selection is actually banging. They honestly have such an amazing selection and they have a really good range of indie titles and more popular titles. They seem to put books out as soon as they get them into the shop. So sometimes you get them before the release date. And I really like that shop. But I went there and I got a copy of The Immortal King Rayo by Vahini Vara. This was a finalist for the 2023 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and Scott over it. Uh, gunpowder fiction and plot is going to be very happy. I'm sure that I've picked this up. I am super interested in this. It's book told in three parts. First set in an Indian village in the 50s where young King Rayo is brought up. Then in the early days of the Silicon Valley boom in part two. And then the third part is a near future... <clears throat> oh, what happened there? The third part is a near future dystopia tinged story after he's been this wildly successful tech CEO and it looks like he's been exiled to an island off Seattle while the world deals with the implications of whatever tech disaster has happened. Sounds brilliant from what I've heard it's got a lot to say about capitalism but I assume there's also going to be a lot about class and power and race those are all super interesting topics to me. Excited to get to this. Wow, if you had to have a drink for every time I said I'm excited to get to this, you'd probably be pretty woozy by now. So yeah, those were the four books that I got in total and it was a lovely day overall, partly just for getting out and about in the sunshine. Like I think even if I didn't buy any books, I would have had a really lovely day. This has been a pretty hastily arranged vlog, which has changed my plans slightly for upcoming videos on the channel. So this weekend I was gonna film, edit, publish my 1K Q&A, and I have clearly not done that. So I'm not 100% sure when I can fit in the filming to do that. So potentially next week, I have filmed next week's video already. What I'm trying to say is I am gonna answer your questions. So don't worry if you are chomping at the bit to know which character I like most from uh, fiction or which is my favorite cake, which I'm very excited to answer. As ever, it has been a pleasure to have a natter with you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed and would like to, there is a subscribe button somewhere on the page, I'm sure. And let me know in the comments what you've been up to this weekend. Have you been to any of the Bristol bookshops? Uh, and if not, uh, do any of the ones that I've shown in this video tickle your fancy and you'd love to come and visit and give them a little bit of a mooch around. But until next time, toodles.